such as um, I'm with Adobe I.O. Um, quick um, show of hands, who hasn't heard of serverless? Just a few. Um, who is a vegan or vegetarian here? I'll, I'll have to apologize in advance because I'll be showing some, some things might be upsetting. <laughs> So um, my talk is about Apache OpenWhisk. Um, it's a serverless platform, um, also known as FAAS, which is Functions as a Service. Uh, forgive the uh, corny pun. <clears throat> Who am I? Um, I'm part of the Adobe I.O. team, and I'm a longtime PhoneGap and Apache Cordova uh, contributor. You can find me on Twitter or email me directly if you have questions after this. So uh, the major server, server um, providers, I'm just show, showcasing four of them here uh, for my presentation's purposes, are, are like um, farms, right? When you, <laughs> you provision a server, it's like buying a whole cow. Um, at the end of the month, you get a new cow, no matter what. <laughs> so um, no matter what, uh, if you don't like the steak or you don't, you don't want the meat, it's still, it's still wasteful. So where, do, where does functions as a service come in? So functions as a service landscape right now um, consists of mainly Amazon, because uh, they're the big gorilla. Uh, Microsoft Azure has Azure functions, and Google Cloud Platform has uh, their cloud functions. And at the top there, you'll see two, two um, serverless platforms based on uh, OpenWhisk, OpenWhisk, the, the, the logo on the right. Adobe I.O. and IBM Cloud Functions are based on OpenWhisk. <clears throat> Here's the uh, quick table about um, what these serverless platforms, uh, languages they cover. As you can see, um, uh, OpenWhisk supports the most, but it's an illusion because their market share um, is not as big as Amazon. So um, the one big thing about OpenWhisk is it can support any compiled language, such as Go or C or even Rust, um, in a Docker container, and they can run it. Um, as you can see here, uh, Docker is in gray, which is um, for Go. So it's not a first-class support, but through a Docker container. Um, Google only supports Node for now, and Azure only supports a few. Um, th this list is current as, it, as of a few days ago. So maybe Amazon has supported something new then, by then. So well, what I'm talk talking about is um, sausages. <laughs> so you don't care what, where all the meat comes from. You care about the sausage. That's essentially what serverless is. It's not a perfect metaphor, but work with me. So you pay money, you get what you want, sausages. You don't care about other parts of the meat that are wasted. All that waste becomes sausage. So, I mean, that's a metaphor I'm going for. So um, as you, you probably see how Amazon uh, does Lambda, Google does Lambda, but you don't know how the, the sausage is made. Um, I'm, I'm going to go into a little bit of how OpenWIS works. So. A little bit of trivia about OpenWhisk. Um, it was codenamed Whisk from IBM Research. But why Whisk? Whisk is, uh, means move nimbly and quickly. And the code runs quickly and gets, gets whisked away. That's essentially what um, serverless is in the OpenWhisk context. It runs a Docker container, um, and it quickly goes away. And also, it was chosen for an easy three-letter CLI. And of course, open means open source and open risk. So let's see the, um, what um, open risk is made of. So as you can see, there's a lot of open source technologies uh, cons uh, that open uh, risk consists of. Nginx, which in simple terms is just a web server. Kafka, 
simple terms, message queue, CacheDB is a database, and Docker is a container, the Docker container. Sorry, let me go back. So as you see at the top right, um, there's the, the Golang mascot and Scala. Um, you, people, uh, developers develop in Scala um, to implement a lot of the functionality in OpenWhisk. And the Go part is the Go CLI, uh, the WISC CLI is implemented in Go. So if any of you are proficient in any of these technologies, I welcome you to contribute to the open, open source project. So who are the contributors to OpenWhisk? The, the biggest four are, of course, uh, IBM, who, um, who donated project to Apache. And the project is not a top level project yet, but it's uh, in incubation. And of course, Adobe, who, uh, who I work for, and Red Hat, and Samsung to a limited part, and a lot of other independent co consultants. So OpenWiz in a nutshell, uh, let's describe how it works. Take, a, for example, an event that comes in, as you see in the top left, uh, for example, from a device like a rain sensor. The event source, which is a rain sensor, we'll call a trigger. Um, the trigger, is, for example, is called uh, you know, rain is falling, uh, which is associated to a rule, which is a one-to-one -one mapping between a trigger and a rule but each rule maps to multiple actions. So the, the action could be logging rainfall, for example. And each layer is designed to scale independently, and uh, that's OpenWIS in a nutshell. So what, what are the benefits of uh, OpenWIS? Um, this is um, not just specific to OpenWIS, but um, to functions as, as a service in general. The first thing is pay as you go, so you pay only for what you use. It's efficient use of resources for both for you and the vendor. Uh, elasticity, auto scaling, you don't have to worry about spinning more servers. Um, heterogeneous development, so your team can use multiple languages and skill sets, so you don't have to get, for example, um, someone that knows a certain language only. Um, for example, uh, OpenWIS supports Swift, so if your team is heavy in iOS Swift, they can do serverless in Swift and OpenWISC. And um, one of the biggest things is on-premise uh, deployment and testing offline, so you don't have to have it hosted by Amazon. You can host it in your own data center. And also, one of the big things is uh, you can chain actions without extra coding, so you uh, from inputs and outputs for, for each uh, action. You can chain them together through the command line to link them without writing any extra code. Uh, you can chain actions, for example, if action one does a video upload, uh, input is some video data and output is a URL. The second action will get the URL and it will output analysis, for example, uh, for machine learning. And finally, um, the biggest thing that I care about is it's open source and there's no vendor lock-in. Uh, there's a quick start of how to do run OpenWhisk. Um, there's a QR code if you want to go to, it's not particularly quick for you uh, <laughs> to run it. But uh, so James Thomas from IBM uh, wrote a blog post of how to run OpenWIS quickly. So first, you've got to install Docker. And then you run this make file. And it will install everything that you saw there, uh, there I, um, that I showed you, uh, Nginx, uh, Kafka, and everything. So once you run it, you use a make file again to control it, stop and run. So after you've done the um, OpenWIS uh, quick start, you can run the OpenWIS workshop. Um, it's a simple NPM install. Um, as you can see, it covers all the um, features of OpenWhisk. Um, that will take you a few hours, um, which we don't have time to cover today. 
So I'm going to show you how to create an action quickly um, since I'm not going to be doing a demo. So the OpenWIS CLI is called WSK. So it's a simple WIS action create, action name, pass your JavaScript file, um, and update, and finally in invoke. In invoke, you pass parameters to it, and you receive something back in the standard out. So that just creates the action um, on your local server, but you want to expose it to the web. So how do you do that? Create a package, and you do the, C, uh, the same create method, but you pass a path and some, some parameters um, uh, and annotation web true. So, and once you create that, you pass uh, get and dash dash URL, and you'll get a URL that is exposed to uh, um, external users. So what's in an action file? Uh, if you've done C or um, Java, you know, um, there's a main function that's called as uh, the main part of your program. It's the same in your JavaScript for uh, OpenWhisk. So the main, main uh, function takes param uh, parameter object, um, and you can use that. And when you return from the web action, the main important part is the body. And the params also contain metadata for the running task. So um, if you're doing an action file, what about NPM packages? Um, if you've done any AWS, AWS Lambda, you'll, you'll know that um, you NPM install your package with your action code, and you zip the whole folder up and upload the zip instead of the action.js. However, for native code NPM packages, you have to NPM install to a Docker container that's the same environment as your serverless runtime. So they can, it can um, get the same, uh, same architecture before you upload it. And OpenWIS has a 48 meg upload limit. But there's, there's workarounds available um, that you can do where you can package your NPM packages in a Docker container that your um, server can reference. So you will work around that 48 meg limit. So uh, if you've You've defined all your actions and how do you deploy it, right? So OpenWIS recently um, um, ha helped contribute to a plugin to the uh, serverless framework. Uh, serverless framework uh, is um, not affili affiliated with OpenWIS. Uh, it's an in independent project, and it helps people abstract the deployment to all the different uh, serverless pr platforms. I encourage you to uh, check it out. So you can use that to deploy to OpenWhisk or Lambda or Google or uh, Azure. So the uh, final part I want to talk about is Adobe I.O. Runtime. Um, Adobe I.O. Runtime is based on OpenWhisk. Um, it's just like um, IBM Cloud Functions is based on OpenWhisk, like uh, Adobe PhoneGap or I Ionic is based on Apache Corova, like a web browser has its engine. Um, so Adobe IU Runtime's engine is OpenWhisk. It's built on OpenWhisk, and it uses the same tools. Um, it helps our internal teams leverage serverless to other uh, functions within the enterprise. And it lets our customers and devs extend and build interesting things based on our data, because we have a lot of data. Uh, Adobe is known for their creative products, but we're, we're also known for our analytics and uh, marketing cloud. So it's pre-integrated with Adobe I.O. events and API gateway, and you will have the easy and secure access to all Adobe APIs. If you go to adobe.io, you'll see all the APIs available to all users. Finally, uh, thank, you, um, uh, thank you to everyone for uh, listening to the, uh, this talk. Uh, it's a quick survey on serverless. Thank you.